Let's build out our London site now. We can see a few differences off the bat. For one, the well names are different as they start with the first two letters of the site, LO. Next, we can see that there's a different type of tag naming convention. Let's see how we can build on to our existing well template in order to accommodate these tag naming convention changes as well as the well name changing. Back in Pi System Explorer, I'm going to create my London element. It'll be based off of the same site template because we're also going to want to know the total site power consumption at London. Let's start building out the London well elements. If I were to just use my well template here, I would not get the right naming convention. So instead, before I create my elements, I'm going to create a derived template. This derived template is going to supersede the parent template when it comes to tag naming conventions. In my library, under the well template, I'll right click and I'll make a new derived template. By incorporating a derived template, any attributes that I make on the derived template that match the parent template's attribute name exactly are going to be overridden. Additionally, attribute names that do not appear on the parent template will be added on this derived template. I'll start by overriding the casing pressure. It'll have the same default unit of measure. And I'm going to configure the pieces of its naming structure later on. Next, I'll create an attribute where I'll build out my tag names. This will be a hidden attribute, as I don't want my clients to see this attribute. Under the properties, I'll mark it as hidden. We'll call this build tag names. I'm going to create a child attribute to build out the two parts that I'll need. These child attributes are automatically hidden because their parent attribute is hidden. Keep in mind the tag name that we're trying to create. It starts with the first three letters of the site name. So for part one, I'll make this a string builder. And in settings, I'll add a line. I'd like to grab the first three letters of the site name. Because this is a well template, the site name is going to be one level up on my parent element. I can look at some existing substitution parameters to see how I can go through my hierarchy. To go up a level, I'll use the dot dot slash element percent. The percent dot dot slash element percent is going to return the full site name, but I only want the first three letters. So I'm going to perform a left trim and take the first three letters. There's more information on using string builders in the documentation linked in the description. The next part of my tag naming convention is to pull the control systems number from a table. In this case, I already have the table built in AF. I can see I have a control system definition. And on the table tab, I can see that for LO well 01, it's going to be a control system number of 749. Because we know that our customers have many spreadsheets that they'll need to maintain outside of Pi software, we allow you to link these tables in AF or to import them completely on their own. Let's go back to the derived template. And for tag name part two, I'm going to make this a table lookup. I'll define the table. And I'd like to return where the control system number is equal to my element name because we saw it was based off of LO well 01, which is going to end up being my element name. To always grab my element name, I'll use the substitution parameter and I'll click add and I'll hit okay. 
The last piece is to bring these all together in my build tag names attribute. This will also be a string builder. And in the settings, I'm going to pull in its child element. The syntax for this is dot pipe and then my attribute name. Again, this goes down one level. And for my naming convention, I need to have a period in between my tag name parts one and two. And I'll hit OK. You can always adjust these setting configurations manually, but keep in mind that if you make any mistake, you will likely break the connection. Perhaps to make everything a bit easier to follow, I'll rename my derived template to will template naming convention 2. And to see if this is working as expected, I'm going to create an element under my London site following my new naming convention. And I'll call it LO well 01. It appears I have an issue with my tag name part two. Let's take a look. And I see my mistake. In the settings, I need to select where the column of my well name is equal to percent element percent. When I go back, I can see that the changes were picked up and I get the first part of my tag names here. Now that we have our building blocks for the tag names, let's finish up getting our casing pressure and power consumption tags written correctly. I'll go back onto my derived template. I'll create child attributes where I'll use string builders to piece these parts together. I'll call it a tag name. This will be a string builder again. And I'm going to bring in the build tag names attribute. And to finish out my naming convention, I'll need to put in my attribute specific .cp abbreviation, and they all end in .pv. I'll do the same thing for power consumption, just making sure to change my abbreviation specific to the power consumption, which will be PC. Something I'm also able to do is copy and paste. And I can adjust directly in this window to .pc. To make the casing pressure and the power consumption attributes pull in the correct tag name, I can click on them adjust their settings, and the correct syntax is going to be percent at dot pipe and then the attribute name and percent. All the different characters that are involved in substitution parameters are listed in the document linked in the description. I'll make sure to specify that this is also in PSIA. You can also copy and paste this configuration either now or later for the power consumption attribute. I'll make sure to specify my source units explicitly here. Let's go back to our well element under London, and we can see that the casing pressure and power consumption is pulling in the correct tag names and therefore the correct tag values that already are set up on our systems. I can choose to hide these tag names, and you might have reasons as to whether you'd like them hidden or not for your own purposes. I'll check in. And let me finish building out the rest of my wells at the London site.
Keep in mind, you're welcome to use PyBuilder RxL add-in to manage these name changes much easier and faster than doing them one at a time manually in PySystem Explorer. And at this site, I only have four wells. Very quickly, I was able to get all of my values into my different London wells. Let's take a look at our London site, and we can see that my total site power consumption will also update once all of the wells are considered. And this looks like a reasonable value for the total site power consumption. In our next video, let's take a look at how our templates that we built out interact when we work with a client tool such as PyVision.